All right, Lumberjack fans, and welcome to our second segment, Me Alex, where we are going to be talking to our guest, Grant, Mr. Defense himself. Oh my God. Thank you all for having me. Grant. Yeah, so, okay, so um, tell us who you were, who you are, and uh, what you were on the SFA basketball team. I was, well, first off, I'm Grant. I am a recently just graduated with my master's from SFA in August. Um, I was a manager for the men's basketball team for five seasons. My first year was actually Coach Underwood's last year with the team when we had Thomas Walkup and Clyde Jafar and everybody. And then I was a manager for Coach Keller for his first, going on his fifth season now. Um, his fourth mm-hmm four years as an SFA head men's basketball coach. So you've seen a lot. Let's just be, let's just be frank here. You've seen Underwood and you've seen Keller. You've seen a lot. You've been through a lot. You've heard a lot. So uh, what a wild, basically five seasons it's been, huh? I've seen my fair share of SFA upsets. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) We have lots of questions about all that, but for the viewers, Y'all have ever been to even one SFA game? I know you've seen Grant down there. I know you've heard him. Uh, even if you've watched a game on TV or if you've listened on the radio, if you hear someone chanting defense, it is 1,000% always Grant starting the chant. Um, so uh, as yeah. Alex and I said in our our podcast from last night's game that we were just sitting there and then we heard someone chanting defense and we're like, where is Grant? Uh, so you <laughs> like just, he's here? What? Yeah. So you graduated in August, right? Yes. Um, so catch us up a little bit on what you're doing now. I am the sales and marketing director at Splash Kingdom Nacogdoches, which is the water park here in Nacogdoches. Um, we've got actually have five parks, which surprises a lot of people. And yes, we do have a water park in Nacogdoches. I still get a lot of questions about that. Um, right. We got park here in Nacogdoches. We got Canton, Texas. We got Shreveport, Texas. We got Greenville, Texas, and Weatherford, Texas. So that's really cool. So, do you handle, do you just handle Nacogdoches Park or do you handle all the parks? I just handle the Nacogdoches Park right now. Um, oh, okay. Work gotcha. On sponsorships and selling season passes for our upcoming season. So, 2021, hopefully. Right, because it's a little cold right now, so obviously the park is closed. Um, but you do have you do have stuff to do. You still you do have a lot of work to be working on. So I mean that which which works that makes sense. Sweet, well, that sounds like fun. Um, so other things, obviously you're living here in NAC, you're working in Nacogdoches. Uh, now that you're graduated and you're obviously not a manager anymore since you're graduated, um, you know what do you probably fill in your free time with? Because I'm a manager when you were the manager head manager I mean your life was pretty much SFA basketball so what are some things you like to do other than go to SFA basketball games clearly uh, I've gone I actually got to go to a couple of the men's football games this past season um, and I'm trying to fill it in with some other stuff too uh, you know working out uh, trying to you know get better you know this COVID stuff kind of got me uh, on the, you know, the COVID-15. Uh, so trying to, <laughs> trying to lose that back. So, uh, you know, just kind of working out, you know, chilling at home. Um, Cause you know, I'm normally used to, you know, late, late evening practices till seven, eight o'clock and then, you know, studying until mm-hmm. one or two in the morning. But um, now I don't really have to worry about that. It's just, you know, water park stuff and, you know, um, yeah. just working on me. I was going to say, you have a lot of free time now, so you're going to have to find some hobbies, find some things to do. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Okay. So Next up, Jacqueline. You started out your first year with Underwood. So can I tell us how you got started um, being a team manager? Um, how I got started is I was actually, that was my sophomore year of college. I wasn't a manager my freshman year of college. Uh, I kind of wanted to get into the swing of, you know, being a college student and sort of, you know, uh, make sure, you know, I 
was ready for the coursework and the study work and the testing work. And then my sophomore year, I actually signed up for the theory of basketball class, which was actually taught <laughs> by um, one of our previous coaches, Desmond Heyman, who was the oh. GA, yeah, GA for the men's basketball team at that time. And then later mm-hmm. on became the assistant coach under um, Coach Keller. Um, but yes, he recruited me actually, uh, Des did. He saw how, um, how much I loved the game uh, at the, uh, during the class, which was actually just a half semester class. So it was like two hour class. Um, he recruited me and I guess the rest is just SFA manager history, uh, yeah. five, five seasons <laughs> with the men's basketball team and uh, some great upsets that I've gotten to see and definitely some life lessons learned during my five years, uh, both being under Coach Underwood and being under Coach Keller. It's really cool that you say that. Um, and it's also really kind of cool that you've been under two different coaches during your time as manager. I mean, I guess just kind of give us a quick little compare and contrast. Like what was it like being under Underwood and then what's up? What was it like being under Keller? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's tough because I only had, uh, sadly only had one year, um, under coach Underwood, which was his last year here. Um, and then he went on to the state and now he's the head coach at Illinois. Um, and then Mm -hmm. having four seasons, um, it's kind of hard to, I guess, weigh, weigh the, weigh the differences between them because I had four years with Keller and it's a lot more, I learned a lot more from him because I had four seasons with him as opposed to one with coach Underwood, but they're totally both great. Uh, two of the top coaches in NCAA Division One men's basketball right now. Uh, I think Coach Underwood's got his team up to number seven, if I looked at the AP poll last. Um, oh, yeah, you know, they're rocking. Um, and then uh, SFA with their first game yesterday, last night, uh, it looked like uh, Coach Keller's got that team rolling, too. That's very true. I mean, but obviously we know very two different personalities, for sure. Yes. I mean – very, very vastly different personalities. Um, okay, so cool. So maybe give us some background on, you know, prepping for the season, practices, maybe, you know, some of behind the scenes, like all the work that goes in, like from your standpoint, like when you were a, you know, manager and all the work and all the prepping and stuff that goes on. Well, prepping really starts, you know, once the season before ends, um, you know, guys get a couple weeks off and then we start right back in the spring semester uh, towards the middle of April, you know, working out um, individually as a team. And then they get a couple weeks off for summer and then they come back for classes, summer one and summer two, again, with individuals, practices, not counting, you know, the times the guys come in to shoot at the gym um, and then getting into fall semester, you know, it starts off with, um, you know, individuals and team practices. And then first official start for practices is usually the normally beginning, beginning of October. And then mm-hmm. that's when we start, you know, we have to code games. We have to, um, you know, practices, sometimes two a day, sometimes one a days. Um, we get wins, usually Wednesdays and Saturdays off, sometimes Sundays, and then, you know, it's just all about um, making sure that the guys are staying healthy, um, making sure they're getting to practice on time, uh, shooting um, in the gym, um, working on games, coding games, and then helping the coaches out wherever we can. Interesting. So when you say coding games, what does that mean? So normally coding games is coaches usually normally look at offense and defense. Um, So Mm -hmm. what I I would do is say, since we played Letourneau last night, we would Mm -hmm. look back at Letourneau's, you know, go back. So it'll probably be Letourneau's last season. um, Look at some of their games from last season, code those games to where specifically what the coaches wanted, like offense, defense. So whenever Letourneau's on offense, it would be coded to where they that when they were on offense and defense as well. And the coaches would look at that and we'd break it down for them just to help them out. That way they're not having to look at, you know, the media timeouts and the whole strenuous game, um, cutting out all the, you know, nits and bits 
of when, you know, teams aren't even playing on the court. So, so basically gotcha. prepping the film for them to do their scouting reports. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. I kind of figured that's what it meant, but you know, for a lot of people, fans out there, they were like coding, what are we doing? Like HTML? <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously you guys do a lot of stuff as managers. I mean, a lot of times you, you see that you see them down there, like helping the guys, you know, shagging balls and stuff um, during warmups and things like that. And then during the game, getting, you know, uh, grabbing their towels, grabbing their jerseys, this, that, whatever. But I mean, obviously there's a lot more that goes into the role of a manager than probably what a lot of people realize. So. For sure. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. So on that point, what, what were kind of some of your more surprising tasks or parts of being a team manager? That's a tough one. Um, like any super random stuff that you were like, you had to do like, Whoa, didn't expect that. This was in the job description. Yeah. Ooh. I think, you know, rebounding for the guys, because a lot of, we have some, you know, over the years, my five years, we've had some guys that, you know, really like to put up shots in the gym. So, uh, you know, I'll get calls sometimes, sometimes, you know, midnight, one o'clock in the morning, like, hey, can you come rebound for me at the gym? And I'm like, sure, I'll help you out. Um, it's just, it's, it was crazy just to see the amount of work that a lot of players that, you know, over my five years of being a manager, how many players, you know, put in that work to, you know, better their game and to be better, you know, uh, in the game. Absolutely. Out of your experience of years, which which player do you did you observe putting in like you would say they put in the most extra hours and work? Um, I think it would have to be between Thomas Walkup and Kevon Harris, um, mm. who is now with the Lakers. Yeah, uh, yeah. Congrats, congrats to Kevon. I know uh, that was exciting. I mean, not surprising given both of their success. Yeah. Oh yeah. And the thing is with Kevon is I got to see him all four years that he was here. Uh, mm -hmm. He came in under Coach Keller his first year and to see how well he, the player he be, he was to now the player he's become is just, you know, amazing in of itself, starting off as a freshman and then developing his game, working on his game all four years, putting in the work and then to see it pay off with, you know, signing with the Lakers is, you know, really telling to the amount of hard work and the kind of, you know, worker he is to, you know, get to where he wants to be. And that's to be an NBA player. Absolutely. Yeah. Not surprising that it was Thomas and, and Kevon. I mean, to be honest with you, I, it, I totally, totally would have guessed them, those two as well. For sure. For sure. Um, so all the things that you told us, all the, roles and descriptions and everything um that you talked about about being a team manager but like let's be real like what was your part about being a team manager like what was like why you kept coming back every season like why you know I want to be the team manager because like this is my favorite part of being a manager just getting to be a part of such a historic program in of itself and being a part um under coach Keller you know helping the team you know, when I was at the Duke game uh, last year, you know, it kind of came full circle, like, man, this is, you know, I was a part of this. And mm -hmm. seeing such a monumental win last year, um, it, it was just full circle to me because, you know, all the hard work we put in up to that game and before the months prior to that game, and then it's just – it was just really, it really hit me hard um, seeing su the success we had versus Duke and then throughout the remainder of that season. Yeah. We can attest to the absolute bananas Duke game as well. I mean, just, we can't stop talking about it. I mean, we really can't. I mean, you, I, yeah, you know, but what, do you have any super special behind the scenes moments from that? Like, maybe kind of being in the locker room and the walk, walk through before and all that stuff. What the crazy thing, I think Keller talked about it in his uh, post game uh, interview mm -hmm. was we 
didn't practice really well because we had quite a few players that were recovering from the flu and um and it was hard uh and coach keller said we didn't practice too well at all that week and we were coming off uh i believe losing to rutgers and then um beating arkansas state and then we had that duke game a few days after we beat arkansas state um after we had lost to oh, Arkansas State was after Duke. Oh, I, I, yeah, Arkansas yeah. State was after Duke. Um, I got to look at the schedule to see see uh, what I forget yeah. which game. It, it was definitely um, just oof. what was the question again? <laughs> You're at a loss for words because it was just a crazy words. situation. I know, I know, yeah. I know. Anything super memorable about your experience with the Duke game? Noteworthy. Definitely the locker room. Uh, a lot of people didn't see me in the video that uh, SFA Basketball posted of, I believe it was 40 second video. Um, I actually got drenched in the water too when they, uh, I believe Samaja drenched Coach Keller with the cooler. I was literally right behind Keller and I got drenched as well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you'll see, you'll, you'll, you'll see, you'll see me at, like towards the end of it. And I'm like right beside Keller getting drenched in water. Um, but yeah, definitely that was memorable uh experience for me i hope you had a dry set of clothes to change into yes i made sure i made sure that i had a dry set of clothes with me on my person so i feel like that's like any good manager's first thing to do be like you know what case we upset and then we get a water cooler shower let me make sure i have like three pairs of clothes just in case you never know and that was definitely definitely one of the most memorable locker room um times for me because I was actually at the LSU game too when we beat LSU mm-hmm. and to have the Duke game and then that locker room scene was just this is something I'm never going to probably experience again in my lifetime um, right were you at the Baylor game too when we when we beat them as well no I was I was actually here in that okay oh. yeah why that, was- that one why weren't I why wasn't I at that one uh they only we only take a couple of managers usually to games um and I did yeah. I draw I draw the short straw of that game so I just stayed back and watched the game uh from home no oh, you should have came with us on the bus <laughs> yeah you should have on the fan bus that was really fun um was so besides fun. the Duke game and the LSU game any other super big highlight favorite game or trip um so Keller's first year, we actually played in the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic in Honolulu at the University of Hawaii. Um, mm. And one of the more memorable times that I've had was definitely it's Christmas Day. Wake up call, I believe, was 4.15 in the morning because our game was at 7, so 11 our time, um, 7 in the morning. And just waking up Christmas Day at 4 four fifteen in the morning. I woke up a little bit earlier so that I could help the players wake up. Um and getting to see the I mean just getting to see the sunrise on Christmas Day in in Hawaii was just, you know, a memorable moment for me. And then um I took it upon myself that game because I think we were playing uh Utah. And I don't know if people remember the previous time we played Utah was in the tournament in the round of 64 when we had Jacob Parker and yes. Thomas Walkup. That was his junior year. Uh-huh. And um, we lost that game. And then we came back and played them in the Diamond Head Classic. So we were hoping it was a revenge game for us. And, you know, it's, you know, these guys woke up at 4.15 in the morning, games at 7. You know, we're on the court at like 6 in the morning, um, Hawaii time. And, you know, I took it upon myself, like, man, these guys look tired. You know, I went crazy. I started yelling, going yeah. crazy. And then the Utah coach <laughs> approached Keller before the game started. I was like, man, your managers are crazy. <laughs> I, I, wish we had, I wish we had managers like that. He's yelling, going crazy, getting these guys hyped. And I just, you know, I just felt, you know, it, that's something that needed to be happening because, you know, four o'clock wake up call, you know, a lot of people aren't up at four o'clock in the morning. So that was definitely one of my most memorable moments. That's awesome. That's really cool. I mean, and again, you're, I mean, you talk coaches, right? I mean, now there's not a lot of, or the Hawaii coach who ever said that. I mean, there's not a lot of managers like you out there. A lot of managers kind of just, you know, really uh, stiff and just kind of do their job and go about it. But you're over there just, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
yelling animated and yelling defense and doing what you need to do to pump up the guys and give them support. I mean, and sometimes there are games where there's not a lot of fans that can travel, especially away games. And really, I mean, to be fair, like you're really kind of almost the only person in there just yelling for them. Uh, minus like, you know, some of the families and stuff that are able to travel, but there are some games, there were some games in there that you were pretty much the only dude, the only person in there, you know, cheering, which is gotta have somebody. Right. And thankfully. Absolutely. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. So speaking of players and all that, all those fun guys that you had the, you know, the uh, privilege of being around for five years uh, during that entire time, it's going to be hard for you, but your favorite player during your time as a manager and why? I'd probably have to say Ivan Kinnett. Um <laughs> You gotta know why. Oh my God. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know. Me, me and Ivan are just great friends now. Um, and he, you know, he's back in Florida uh, mm -hmm. with his family. And I believe he's trying, trying to be a coach as well over there in Florida. Um, and believe it or not, you know, Dallas Cameron, that's where he started too. Uh, after he graduated, he was a high school assistant coach and now he's over at Oklahoma state mm -hmm. with, uh, Coach Boyton um, and Coach E, uh, who were both previous coaches underneath under Coach Underwood um, here at SFA, um, and it's just the reason Ivan is such a great guy is just you know you know we're friends to this day still, and I've talked you know I talked to him a couple of days ago, and he was just such a great friend and such a great guy to not just me as a manager but my other managers as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, hey, that was not who I was expecting. No but answer. great answer. That's why we got to ask these questions because yeah, oh, well, they're great questions. Great questions. I mean, <laughs> again, kind of like just I was not expecting that answer, but I mean, at the same time, I, I, I totally I could see it. I love it. That's great. Yeah, we're happy to know. So, who who was like your favorite coach or assistant coach staff to interact with, and why? Kind of thing. Um. I guess coach, coach Heyman, coach Desmond Heyman um, was just a really great mentor, you know, from the start, from being in his class and then <clears throat> really helped me develop as a person and as a manager, and hopefully one day as a coach, maybe uh, down the line, down the road. Um, coach, coach Heyman was just, <clears throat> excuse me, just a great mentor for me and really taught me a lot. And it's just great to see where he is now as a coach over there at La Tech, so. Yeah, yeah. we love this. What a great dude. I mean, we can't yeah. say enough, enough good things about him. So, I mean, I just remember how stoked we were when Keller made him an assistant coach. Agreed. Um, and now to see him at La Tech, I mean, that's awesome. Uh, we, were, we were sad to lose him, but honestly, extremely excited and happy for his, you know, movement, moving up and continuing to grow as a coach as an assistant coach and then hopefully one day as a head coach because he's he's just that type of guy I think and it, like you said you learned a lot from him Grant and I feel like players can really learn a lot from him too um, and I think that that's why he's so like relatable as a coach and he's just he he has that kind of like special touch you know that <laughs> special kind of mm, something about him as a coach because he has that he just has that personality and he has that magical kind of uh that magical skill as a, and he, as a he's been recognized for it too i believe he's mm -hmm. gotten a couple of awards for being the top one of the top 30 under 30 coaches in the ncaa a couple times the yeah. past couple mm -hmm. years so it's really speaking to how hard of a you know a worker he is and how great of a coach he is um absolutely receiving you know, awards like that couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. And we miss them. And hopefully we'll get to play Law Tech again soon, either there or away, so that we can go see him or we can he can come here and visit. Definitely, definitely. Absolutely. Next time we play Law Tech in uh, what's what's up? Where, where is that place at? Rustin. Rustin. Ah, that's it. That's it. I always forget Rustin. So we'll have to take a road trip. We'll go. Um, okay. So let's talk about this season, this year, this team. How do you think um, as a as a former manager being all up in everything when it comes to SFA basketball, knowing what you know of this team, if you know much at all, 
how do you think we look? How, how do you think we're looking as a team in general this season? Coming in, I'm, I believe Coach Keller and his staff really reloaded with some great recruits in um, Nigel, who we got yeah. from, I believe, UTEP. Yeah. And then um, DeAndre Heckard from TJC. And a lot of people might not know this, DeAndre and Cameron Johnson actually played a year at TJC before Cam came over here last year. So to get a player that kind of already knew one of our players, how he, how he plays, uh, and then them playing together really helps out because DeAndre is a point guard and um, really knows Cam well as a player. And then <coughs> um, getting Demir to uh, – getting Demir healthy and seeing him, you know, make that three pointer, even though he got the friendly roll last night. Um, <laughs> Demir, Demir can be a pretty good shooter. Um, and then getting the Nacogdoches product. Nah, nah. Um, it was great seeing him get some minutes last night as well. Um, I think just all around as a team, um, we're, we're a pretty complete team. Um, Coach Keller and his staff really reloaded well, um, getting the right guys. And it's just, he talked about it in one of his, <clears throat> talks a couple weeks ago like it's all about guys coming into their new roles and making sure um, they know what their new roles are um, mm -hmm. that leadership we have with our five seniors Charlie David <clears throat> Gavin um, Rati, Rati um, yeah. just making sure that they fall into those leadership roles and making sure mm -hmm. they know what those leadership roles are absolutely yeah I couldn't agree more and uh burning question I have is do you know how to pronounce Nana's name his full name <laughs> thing is the thing is I've I've actually known Nana quite a few years um he normally came to practices quite a bit um mm -hmm. over the years um I honestly don't know how to pronounce his last <laughs> name uh, <laughs> dang it because I don't I don't want to butcher it uh um his dad is actually a professor here at SFA too, as well. So yeah, we knew that, but yeah, we've we've just stuck with Na Na because it's just it's easier and it's catchier and yeah. no no trouble there. <laughs> Zero trouble, and we don't want to butcher it. Just like you said, we don't want to butcher his last name, and then look like a fool when it's like not even close. So we're just we're just gonna stick with Na Na, and until we get like a con correct pronunciation, we're just we're just gonna stick with Na Na. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Absolutely. Um, so yeah. All right. Last question here, Grant. So, I mean, kind of, we talked about this a little earlier, but just kind of what are your thoughts on, and I think we're all in agreement that the, the group looks really good and fresh coming out. So we're happy with that, but mm -hmm. so thankful that we actually have a season and that we get to go in person and watch, but still major bummer that due to all the COVID restrictions, um, you know, we can barely have anybody in there and it's all spaced out and everything. So what's kind of your thoughts on the, the emptiness and how, how do you think that's going to affect, um, affect play and whatnot? I really think it might affect the home court advantage feel. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely. We, I know that's, if we would have played these first three games last week at, in Bubbleville, we would have had, it would have given the guys sort of a, a look at, at to what the season might be like. Um, cause I don't believe Bubbleville allowed fans if they would have competed in that tournament last week. Um, but <clears throat> you know, it's, the game was kind of, it was kind of surprising to me last night coming to the game and then, you know, it just sounded so quiet. It's not as quiet. It's just, you know, normally William R. Johnson is rocking and fans are loud, but, mm -hmm. you know, due to COVID restrictions, you know, it's kind of hindered that whole home court feel um, and sort of home court advantage. Um, so. Yeah. Yeah. It's we definitely agree. weird, weird, weird. I mean, I felt it was one of those where, you know, when you're somewhere and you feel like you start talking and everything gets quiet and you're like, Oh, everyone's listening to me. It was like that mm -hmm. the whole game. I was like, everyone's going to hear our commentary. <laughs> Where normally we can say what we want and only maybe like a couple of the players or maybe like you when you were behind, you know, behind the, you could hear us what we said, like our stupid comments and stuff. But now if we say anything above a dull roar, like everybody can hear you, everybody can hear our comments. And I'm like, ah, we're on the board. We probably shouldn't be like saying some of the stuff we're saying. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, it was, it's just weird. It is weird. I mean, and normally the band's there, the the Roaring Buzzsaw band is there, but like normally they're not there during Christmas break. So I'm kind of just like in my head thinking, oh, maybe, maybe they'll be able to come back after, you know, in January or whatever, February, but who knows? It, I don't it, even know. It's interesting these first couple of months uh, since uh, students, they didn't allow students to come back after Thanksgiving break. So we're not going to have students probably in Willie Mar Johnson until the middle of January right when conference play starts. So it's going to be interesting these first couple of months to see um, the fans that show up to home games at William R. Johnson. Well, yeah. And I mean, and, and if there are students there right now, it's just because they either live in town or they came back for the day for the game, which is totally plausible. Like, so if you're listening out there and you want to come to a game and you're a student, totally come because um, you still can come. Well, they, they, they let some students come back who are in the dorms. There's, there- yeah very very minute amount but there are still some yeah um which is just a i mean it's obviously detrimental to like you're right grant our our, our home court advantage is just almost shot um last night you know there's not a lot of people there but then the people that are there we can there are people that are there that can make noise but nobody was really doing much until you got there and started yelling defense i'm like yes success let's go like and you know I, it was just, it was crazy. It was just crazy. The whole thing is crazy. The whole situation is crazy, but at the same time, I'd rather it be crazy than us not have games to go to at all. So we'll take it over nothing for sure. Oh man, it's just nuts. But Grant, we are so, so, so excited for Lumberjack basketball. I know you are. It's going to be different for you sitting in the stands and not on the court um are you sad I am a little bit it was it was kind of weird for me just sitting in the stands last night and Mm -hmm. just seeing the game from that perspective um cheering the guys on you know a couple of them were looking at me like (laughs) okay (laughs) because normally 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 I'm I'm right behind them and you know Mm -hmm. talking their ears off and I'm actually in the stands now and cheering them on um so it was it was definitely 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 kind of weird for me uh just yelling from a different part of the William R. Johnson last night I I totally understand because like we mentioned earlier before we started recording that Jacqueline and I used to sit over in that area where you kind of were last night and of course you were near that you were in like the student section area and that's where I used to sit when I was a student as well so it's a good spot good view but you know now that we moved from over there to now over where we are behind the bench it would just I could not imagine going back over there because it's just a totally different experience and we've even said even the few times that we sat on the court which is I mean so much fun but it's like we there's just nothing like being right behind the bench and yeah, everything that's going on and being that close to the, you know, the players and the coaches and knowing what all's going on. It's just a different level of engagement. It is. Yeah. And especially when you have players, you know, like last season, like Nate and them and who would actually like interact with us in the stands, it's just even better. And that's why I'm kind of just sad that we're so far back that they really, unless I'm screaming and yelling it, they really can't hear our, our dumb conversations and our dumb comments and stuff. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it just sucks being that, you know, that many rows back, but hey, do what we got to do, I guess. All right. One last question. I just thought of it just now. Um, the team right now, the current team right now, who do you think, who is your sleeper pick? Who is your pick for like, newcomer breakout like sleeper pick who's gonna just like totally just surprise everyone this season who do you think I think um I think it starts at the point guard position David David Kakaris um you know I looked at the box score after the game yesterday and I kind of had to you know give it a second glance um he went eight for eight last night um I know a couple of those a couple of those shots were breakaway layups but um I think David might, you know, no, no, uh, no knock to David, but um, I really think he might surprise quite a f- quite a few people this year with his play um, and his shooting, because um, he's he's got a really good really good stroke with the ball, and um, he's really been working hard to developing as a player over the past couple of months. 
Um, so I think really David Calcaries might be a surprise. Um, I am excited to hear that. Year. Yeah, I like that. I like that because I've always loved David. I mean, me and Jacqueline, we love David. Um, yeah. he, his father cracks us up. We love his dad. Um, and so I'm really, I really hope so. I hope David does surprise a lot of people because last night he was playing so well. And like, he always could play well. Like last season when he was in, he always like put 120% into it. But I think this year, you know, being a senior, having that leadership, people are looking to him, people are looking to Rati, Gabe and blah, blah, blah. But there's, I mean, he, there's so much potential with David to just really be like amazing. Like last night he was so good. Definitely. I was, I was beyond myself. I was like, ah, he's doing great. It was good. Good stuff. Oh my God. All right, well, Grant, Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to uh, meet with us and chit chat about Lumberjack basketball. And I'm sure we will see you on Friday. Yes, definitely. I'll be there. Yes. The whole, the whole game. The whole game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, we will be there as well. Um, let's hope they're uh, serving beer this time. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Cause now we can drink it anywhere in the stadium and not just in that section. Definitely. I'm excited. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, thank you so much, Grant. And uh, we appreciate you coming in and chit chatting. And I'm sure we'll have you back on again at some point. Um, you're kind of too on a couple games and things like that. So again, we appreciate thank you it for having me. Absolutely. We, were, you know, we were really excited to have you on. So you're, you're just the voice of defense of <laughs> SFA men's basketball. Press you. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Grant. Thanks. Thank y'all.